Hello, I am Lux, and this is the awesome Ember. And this is our thoughts on Steven Universe, season five, probably 11 and 12 episodes, but Lars of the Stars and Jungle Moon. I'll put it in the title and it'll be in the information and the tags and everything, so we'll be fine. We were having so much fun wrestling with the Cartoon Network app trying to get Lars of the Stars to play. Yeah, for some strange reason, it kept triggering as if it was at the end of the episode, but it was playing the intro. So it was in the one tiny little corner of the screen. And for some reason, the app doesn't allow you to tap back on the video you're watching to make it full screen in that mode, which is so weird. I mean, what if I wanted to watch the end credits? Yeah, I usually watch end credits. There's useful information in them. So we finally got that to play, and we watched both of the episodes, and wow, they are amazing episodes. It's like Steven Universe doesn't know how to make a bad episode, because they're all good and they just keep getting better. I think it's because of how long it takes them to make the episodes, though from what we understand, there are actually are a bunch of episodes already made, but Cartoon Network doesn't want to show them because they're like, can't we just get back to what the show was what do you mean get back to what it was this is what the show was it's like how people say the second season of gravity falls is so much darker than the first no it's not you weren't paying attention oh wow these episodes <laughs> lars of the stars is such a perfect parody of starship star war star track all of it, I felt like we were playing Artemis Flight School. This is also another one of those instances where I felt like we were watching an anime as well. Because I'm like, I've seen this before, and they're definitely making references to, I think it's uh, something 999? Galaxy Express 999. Yeah, because of Lars's cape. I'm pretty sure that actually comes from one of the captains in that show, or movie. Because I think there were movies, and there was a TV show, and there was another movie. Uh, okay, for Galaxy Express Triple Nine, I mainly remember movies, which I didn't really watch at the time. Yeah, and I'm just remembering fragments of memories. I just know that outfit came from that, and oh my god, Lars. When he's not in his own head, he's like the coolest person ever. He just needs to stop thinking, like, I'm not that cool. I want to be with the cool kids. You are a cool kid. I mean, for Pete's sakes, you're piloting an interstellar starship with a crew of aliens, and you're being, I was going to say, bad, but yeah. He's being quite kicktail about it because he is anticipating the moves. He knew that Emerald wasn't going to blow up the starship, so he played that. He called her bluff. And just, wow. <laughs> he also has so much self-doubt and so much of a bad connection in his head with Sadie because of the whole thing he goes through in that episode of like, oh god, she's having so much fun without me. Was I the one preventing her from having fun now that I'm gone? Yeah, it's like now was I like somehow holding her back? Because even though what he was saying was like, I should be the one doing all this. I think internally he was going, oh my god. I've been such a horrible person, but on the outside, he's trying to cope with it, and that's why he's... Because he's not really that selfish of a person. He may seem like it, but that's because that's his point of view of what a cool person is. And when he's overthinking and trying to be cool, that's when he's a jerk. It's when he's not thinking, when he's acting calmly without running scenarios through his head 50 million times that he's at his best. Steven and Connie did such a great job of pulling Lars out of that by pointing out, look at everything you've done. Did you do any of this to hurt Sadie? He's like, no, of course not. And they all go, because you're best friends. And there's the Stefani fusion with an updated hairstyle. To match Connie's. Mm -hmm. Also, I love how they like get you thinking and because you love her. Yeah, because, because... Your best friends. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, wow. Just, wow. Also, who knew Stefani needs to shave? 
I don't think they've ever stayed fused long enough to find out. Also, I'm surprised that they're so stable in the fusion because I thought they may defuse when they were on that planet in that one point of like, what do we do? What do we do? Yeah, at that point, I thought they were going to lose the fusion. But I think overall, it was safer for them to stay fused. And they have had a lot more practice at it, especially since the mindfulness episode where they had trouble fusing. And just the experimental ship that only the captain can fly. And one of the people from Earth must be able to fly it too. <laughs> no, it was basically, Captain, permission to go in your place. If it drives anything like a car, I can do it. <laughs> Permission granted. But yeah, it drives exactly like a car. And I love all his little on-screen readouts. Target, bingo bongo, <laughs> and then the missiles. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh my god, that little starship. I hope they rebuild it. Also, I love how Steven and Connie come out of his head right in the middle of an important negotiation, as it were. Yes, yes, very interesting. Ah, uh, and it reads so well as a parody it's really nails it yeah well they even did you know the stalled screens with the names and the descriptions the way emerald was acting too was so classic over-the-top villain without being an over-the-top villain you almost were like i kind of care about her i want to know more <laughs> yeah like em emerald can we bring you onto the ship and have a nice discussion so that way, once we take the ship to Earth, you can take it back? Because we only need it to get there. We don't really need to keep it. We don't think we need to keep it. Maybe we need to keep it. At one point, I actually thought that they would end up back on Earth in that episode. Problem is bringing her with them. I thought that might happen too until we had the experimental fighter that only the captain can pilot. I'm like, well, there goes that theory. <laughs> Of course, it doesn't help that I saw the title of the next episode was Jungle Moon, so I'm like, yeah, they're not getting home. Maybe in the next episode, at least Steven and Connie are. Yes, since Lars is sending them back. Also, more Diamond Dreams. And during that sequence, I actually thought that she was White Diamond, not Pink Diamond, because of the way her eyes change shape, or its eyes change shape, when you're talking about Stevani. Because they were White Diamonds. And so I was like, oh, white diamond. And then pink diamond. Oh, also pink diamond is the daughter of yellow diamond. Hmm. Possibly. We don't know how the diamonds were created. We know how the other gems are created in kindergartens, but we don't know where the diamonds themselves came from. But it was so interesting, the start of the dream sequence, because as Mrs. Maheshwaran was talking, like, that's yellow diamond. I wonder if they're actually the same voice actress. It could actually be with how these productions work. And it would actually work really well with that dream sequence too. Yes, it would. And even if they're not the same voice actress, I think they pulled Yellow Diamond for that entire sequence because I was immediately going, that's Yellow Diamond. What? She's reacting to Stefani as a person not as one of those human creatures and not as a lesser gem like her pearl or her ruby or her sapphire even though the sapphires are technically nobility they're still under the diamonds and did you catch the pearl selfie yeah <laughs> i'm with yellow diamond <laughs> snapchat that <laughs> just to let you know i have no idea how to use snapchat i haven't even been on the network I've been thinking about dabbling in it because I hear it's a good place to share photos, you know, your art. But I'm like, eh, I heard it's kind of complicated and you can only really do it from the mobile app. I'm like, oh, okay. But back to the episodes. Yes, and continuing with the dream sequence. Because I was like, Stefani's complaining and saying just as important as you. That's claiming diamond status. So I was like. We don't really have a personality profile of Pink Diamond, so this is very interesting. That sounds like early Pink Diamond might have been a little bit of a spoiled child. Mm-hmm. And I need to, like, go back and watch the, like, three or four frames where you actually get a clear look at Pink Diamond's face before she punches whatever is broken there, which I think that dream is actually taking place where Stefani is sleeping. Because she touches that glass, and I think that glass is what got broke. 
And if that's where that seam took place, that's why there'd be enough residual for Stefani to be picking up on it in dreams. Though if Pink Diamond is more like a daughter, that makes Yellow's anger and Blue's constant sorrow very interesting. Yeah. More so than it was before. This show is just Cartoon Network, don't mess with it. And if you feel like you have to mess with it, call up Netflix and go, would you like a show? We don't want it anymore. Would you like this baby? <laughs> and just sell it to Netflix and let Netflix fund it. Because they will probably just leave Rebecca, Sugar, and crew alone and go, okay, so do you want all of it up on Netflix instantly? And what do you want your release schedule to look like? How many episodes do you have? How do you feel? How far do you want to take this? Because we're willing to green light you for, you know, say this much. <laughs> yeah, and it would be a great purchase for them because everyone loves Steven Universe and it would people would sign up for Netflix by the droves. Because that's all Netflix wants. There's a reason that Netflix never gives the statistics of how many people watch their shows. That's not what they count. All they care about is the subscriber count. If more subscribers come in after a show's been added, that show continues to be greenlit. They've only ever canceled like I think three shows so far and those shows apparently didn't bring in enough subscribers but Voltron and you know all the big shows that you really hear about they're still going. Is Orange is the New Black a Netflix one? My co-workers were into that one a couple years ago. I can't remember if that's Netflix or Amazon. I think that's Amazon. I think Orange is the New Black is Amazon. No wait no you're right that's Netflix because Orange is the New Black and this is how they're connected in my head. Orange is the New Black and that one with Kevin Spacey or whatever his name is. Yeah, that one I think got canceled. Ace, Ace of Spades? Something like that? Uh, something Cards of the White House or something like that. That's House of Cards. House of Cards, yes. Technically, it's actually getting a final season. They wrote his character out. <laughs> What's really funny is they were planning on wrapping up the show anyways. So, kind of okay timing. But yeah, Cartoon Network, you don't handle your shows well. Cartoon Network, please leave Steven Universe alone to do its thing. Go back to driving Teen Titan Go into the ground. Nobody cares about it. I bet you it's more parents than kids that are actually driving the ratings for Teen Titans Go right now. Because they go, oh, this is a stu fun, stupid show. Sit down and watch this, kids. I'm going to go out and work. I bet you that's what's going on. Probably. Because I remember when Cartoon Network used to have good shows. Yeah. Like the original Teen Titans. And Young Justice. And... Pokemon. But tangenting back into Steven Universe. Oh, not just the dream, but that whole episode was another good one. I mean, shipwrecked on a strange planet. I love how, like, we have to survive. <laughs> and my first thoughts when I'm on an alien planet is like, okay, what disease did I just get? <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's going to kill me? And how much of this is poisonous? Probably all of it. Dang. Because if you think about it, the moment you land on an alien planet, the moment you're out of your ship, you will die. Even if the atmosphere is exactly like Earth, there are pathogens on that planet that your body has no idea how to deal with. You will catch one and die. Even if it's the common cold on that planet, it will kill you. Because you have no defense. But no, they're able to eat the creature that's not poisonous eat the fruit that's not poisonous, drink the water that's not tainted, not even with trace minerals that would be harmful to a human gem fusion. I'm thinking it's actually because they're a human gem fusion that all of this doesn't affect Connie at all because of Steven's physiology is Xing out all of this and they're just getting the correct stuff that their body can work with at least long enough to last uh, probably about a week. I want to say about a week based on shaving I do have facial hair, so I know about how long it takes to get kind of fuzzy like that. Though that does vary a bit from person to person. Yeah, that's why I said about. As I continue to rub my face. Sandpaper! I need to shave. <laughs> <laughs> so what were your favorite moments from both of these episodes? Most of it. That's a good answer. I will take that answer. I will also give mine of most of it. <laughs> Any nitpicks? They were on a jungle moon and no Ewoks. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Like, if we don't look out the window and see Endor, I'm going to be disappointed. 
I'm like, if we don't have some cutesy Ewok equivalent. Which reminds me, that's another scene. I don't know if it was a reference to Avatar or not, but we can't eat it. It's cute. You're lucky, little meat creature. <laughs> it's cute. We need the protein. We finished the energy bars. Can we just eat fruit? Fruit's good. <laughs> And then I'm guessing the mama shows up. Yeah, I'm guessing that's the adult form. Yeah. Also, I love its locomotion. Also, speaking of locomotion, wow, it just jumps off and floats down. That's so cool. I wonder if they were referencing shows like, oh God, what were they? These were also like on the Cartoon Network a while ago as reruns before they moved everything over to Boomerang. Uh, there was this creature that's yellow and had a blob and there was a big thing and they were a bunch of humans. Oh, oh, God, I watched that. Yeah, so did I. It's like something and something. It's a, it's a split name thing. Yeah, because there were like the, there were two of the blobs. There were a big one and a little one. And then you had an adult male lead, an adult female lead, and a younger boy. I think it was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Yes. Along, It was on the same time as Johnny Quest. And also that other one with the guy with the laser sword. Had a big furry guy also. And there was a woman with them, and they rode, rode these weird horses, and their moon was split in half. Oh, oh, horses, horses, that was my keyword. <laughs> check Ember's reading room. Yeah, I was going to say, for those who haven't heard it yet, check Ember's reading room. Please, go watch Ember's reading room. It's a fun to life a romp through Ember's childhood through the medium of children's books. Self-promotions aside. But yeah, it felt like one of those creatures that would belong in that show. I just can't remember the names of it. I'm like, also, Space Ghosts was also another show on during that time period. I remember watching all of this stuff when I was a little tyke. <laughs> well, probably not that young, but still, I remember Saturday mornings and stuff like that when these shows were on, like, all the time in rerun form. So any other thoughts on these two episodes? <laughs> I already covered the locomotion of the creature, which I really like, both the spinning form and the hop-away descent. And... I also find it interesting that Lars was just ready to send Steven and Connie back to Earth, not wait for them to ride back with the rest of the crew, just actually send them home. Once again, I'd like to point out how kick tail Lars is. Who knew he could be such an awesome space captain? Well, it's not usually something you get an opportunity to do on Earth. Yeah, like we said at the beginning of the episode, if he just gets out of his own way. It's like Shrek 3. You are the thing standing in the way of your own success. Yeah. Shall we wrap things up? Let's. I mean, it was only two episodes. <laughs> uh, oh my god. I can't wait for more. Just, wow. We can because free time does yeah. not exist. Yeah, just the perfection of these two episodes. I know they're not actually perfect, but they were just did it so well. No, oh, they did a lot of things that were right and that we're good i bet if we matched it up with that magic parabola it hit a lot of spots because it was very satisfying even though we don't have much of a resolution we have a resolution but we don't really have a resolution because they're not taking lars home they got to see lars they're gonna be able to update his parents but basically they showed up helped out in one dog fight crash landed had to be rescued and now the captain's sending them home Ooh, I love this show. Outro. Outro. And this has been our thoughts on Steven Universe. Season 5, episode numbers something and something, Lars of the Stars and Jungle Moon. I just love the way that sounds. Lars of the Stars. Yeah, yeah, rhymes are very seductive. And the English language has so few of them. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, share. Sharing helps a lot. We like to be liked. It's nice to be liked. Uh, comments? We're, we're still small enough that we managed to answer most of them. I'm sorry for those I haven't answered yet. I only have so much time and there's so much I want to tell. Enjoy Lux's art. You can find more of it on Tumblr, Twitter, DeviantArt, Reddit, Facebook, Google+, wherever we can find to cram it on the internet. The internet has lots of space for stuff. Hello. 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 Rumi. <laughs> oh. uh, enjoy Lux's art and would like some of your own. 
You know, he does that kind of thing. There's a commission link down there with uh, pricing and availability. I've uh, been told the pricing is reasonable, availability, the reasonable of the that varies, you know, life and all. Uh, 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 don't throw quarters at your screen, it might break. Please, please don't. I heard LCDs can be very temperamental. I, I, I appreciate the money, but because of the medium we're working in, we, we can only accept it in electronic form. Well, we have two vehicles for that, so please put the quarters back in your pocket. <laughs> Uh, for those who are willing to have a monthly deduction out of their electronic money accounts, we have a Patreon where Lux posts art. Yeah, that's what he does. I mean, come on. At the $1 level, you get monthly quick sketches with the right to provide input on what those future sketches should be. Higher tiers get you high quality drawings that took a little more time. No, 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 don't go. We, we have the non-commitment version too. Remember I said there's two vehicles. So there's also a coffee, not to be confused with Kofi from Fish Stew Pizza. And that takes PayPal and it's $3. Kofi doesn't, coffee doesn't take a cut and one time no commitment, you can walk away afterwards. Thank you again.